All right. So since Leo season is a fire sign, which is about activity and energy and radiance, we are actually going to begin in the body, getting into the body. So uh, I've asked that you have space to move. I've asked that you have either a couple of candles, um, fresh candles, or even just pen marker. And I want to just mention a little bit about Leo in terms of medical astrology which is something that I really enjoy because I think that while astrology is really fun to read and learn about, unless we feel it in the body, it's hard to connect. Leo rules the sun of the body, the heart. Nothing can exist without this vital orb or organ. And Leo's radiance, generosity, and desire to shine keep us alive. All of Leo's body areas circulate vitality, the heart and its vessels bring blood to every cell, while the spinal cord and myelin sheaths allow life-sustaining impulses to travel like omnidirectional rays. The sun is our most proud and loyal light, and unlike the moon, rises whole every day. Leo's anatomy reflects this integrity and consistency, not only in the heart, but also in the constant muscular support and uprightness of the spine. And that's Claire Gallagher from Body Astrology. So I would love for you to come into what we call a sphinx position in physical yoga, which is lying on your belly, on your forearms. So coming down to the earth, which is a nice way to ground when we enter a fire cycle. Pelvis is down. You can put a light blanket or towel under your hips if they're... Um, it feels just uncomfortable. Tops of the feet about hip width distance. Fingers are spread wide. The elbows are under the shoulders, the wrists in line with the elbows. And think about that energy we just talked about. So the heart and the spine and radiance and brilliance. And so you can keep the chin parallel to the mat. If it's comfortable for your cervical spine, you can start to slightly look up. If this is the first shape you've taken in your body today, then maybe start to rock your hips, shake your head out. And I want you to begin to feel your breath moving up your spine into your heart as you press your hips down. So Leo season is the midpoint between the solstice and the equinox, the summer solstice and fall equinox in the northern hemisphere, the winter solstice and spring equinox in the southern. As we hit around August 1st, 2nd, that midpoint is exact. And the lunar celebration of that is on the full moon. So the sun entered this energy on the 22nd of July. The moon will be new in Leo on the 28th. Again, that solar Lamas on the 1st or 2nd of August. And then we have the full moon in Aquarius, lunar Lamas also connecting with Saturn on the 11th. And then we'll continue to have the planets shifting. Mercury is already in Leo. Venus is moving into Leo. And Venus, those of you who follow our Venus journey, is moving into the root chakra. So she's almost to the underworld. She's been on the morning star journey for the last seven months, eight months, and she's almost to the root. So it's very powerful that she's meeting the root and she will be in the root when she enters Leo. So this is asking us on every level to connect to deep self-love, radiance, joy, pleasure, creativity. So just take a couple more breaths and feel into the integrity of your spine and your heart, or even just noticing the sensation. Is there tightness? Is there tenderness? Is there a disconnect? Can you breathe all the way up into your heart, the front, the back, the sides? It's one of the reasons I love this position because it activates all parts of the heart. The heart, energetically, we talk about multiple chambers that represent past, future, present. Now go ahead and take a big, big breath in and then sigh it out your mouth. <sighs> and you can do that a few more times or a breath that uh, we often will do in the physical yoga practice that I love for this cycle is the lion's breath. So the lion's breath, you take a big breath in closing the eyes. And then as you exhale, you stick out your tongue and look towards your third eye. So it looks like this. It's a lot of fun to do. So I'd like to invite you to begin this practice by doing that three times.
That breath clears the root of the heart. It helps to support our digestion, detoxification, and it begins to help us find that roar. Take another breath. And then as you exhale, release your head down, slide your hands under your shoulders. And then if it's appropriate for your knees, come to all fours. If it's not, come to a seat. So you can sit on your bottom, you can sit on a bed, on a chair. If you're in tabletop, spread your fingers. So take up space, knees under the hips. If you're seated, once again, make sure your sit bones are down and your spine is long. So just feel into your spine. So Leo is ruled by the energy of the lion, but any of those big cats is connected to Leo. So the lion, the tiger, our wild house kitties. And to start to feel into that energy in your own body. We've all watched a cat move, a lion move. And you might just start to bring that into what we call cat cow where you drop the belly and open into cow and then round to cat. You can do this from your seat, but just feel like you're moving in a feline skin. Again, the integrity and strength of your spine and your heart, soften your jaw. In astrology, Leo rules the fifth house. So even if you don't know anything else about your birth chart, know that we all carry this energy in the fifth house. And this time of year, we are asked to spend time in this space. Fifth house is creativity, self-expression, pleasure, joy, and children, the inner child as well as outer children. And so bringing in playfulness, dress up, connecting to light and warmth. Oftentimes in the year, because this is the midpoint between that solstice and equinox, so we're asked to pause and celebrate, celebrate making it more than halfway through the solar year, celebrate what is light and bright. This is the only energy that is resonant with the sun. So this is where we get to wake up that personal sun. And if you've been feeling dim, dark, unenergized. This is where we wake that solar energy up. Now you can stay with the simple spinal movement. If you want to bring a little more fire from tabletop, you'll lift your right leg up. And as you inhale, you'll drop the belly, open the chest, exhale, round knee to nose. And you'll play with that a few times. Obviously, if you're seated, it's not as easy to do that. So just stay with your spinal movement. And in Chinese medicine and in medical astrology, we connect the heart. They're very similar. Uh, medical astrology is informed by Chinese medicine. So the heart and the spine. When we look at the chakra system, the fire element is in the solar plexus, which is just below the heart, feeding into the back of the spine, the mid spine. And so a lot of times this is a good cycle to increase our cardio, to increase sweating, whether that's a sauna or steam, but obviously if you're in a place where the climate is hot, you want to be really careful with that. So dancing and anything that is fun to do, what you find fun to do. And if you're rounding with that knee to nose, hold the next time, take a big breath to squeeze that knee in. And then reach it out and hold. So this is our tiger tail. And you can stay just like this or point the toes, draw the heel back, make that little tail. Option to bring the left arm up. You can just reach it forward or reach back. Don't have to hold the foot. You can just reach in the direction. Or for some of you, you might connect. Take one more big breath. So this is a beautiful heart opener. If it's available, inhale, exhale, release. Push back into child's pose if you're in tabletop. If you are seated, you can just fold forward over your legs. And even in child's pose, we're opening up the back of the heart. We're lengthening the spine, moving that fiery energy inwards. So that's another thing too. We burn out because we're putting too much energy out. So it's important that we feed ourselves with pleasure, with joy, with fun, that we come back to what makes us happy. Slowly bring yourself up to all fours, or again, walk back up to your seat, long spine. If you did the right side, we'll lift the left. And again, add that little bit of core awareness here, that tiger tail movement, or just stay with the spinal movement. And these couple of poses that I offer, if you want to bring them into your practice this month, it's a great way to continue to harness the Leo energy. 
or just finding for yourself poses and practices that help you to feel like you connect to your heart, your spine, your fire. And just stay with your breath. So feeding that energy through the whole body. Hold the knee to nose if you are pulsing. Breathe into that. Stretch the leg out long and you might stay just like this. The balance wakes up the core or point the toes, bend the leg back. So curling your tail, maybe right arm comes up and forward. Maybe it stretches back, lift up through your heart. Maybe you hold the foot. Lift through your chest, take one more big breath and release back into that pose of the child. So childlike wisdom, right? There's so much power there. We often say like from the mouths of babes <laughs> and that's Leo, that's Aries. Those are the fire signs. They're so connected to source. So connected to the primal energy. It's just pure. You know, you look into the eyes of a baby, a toddler, you know, animals, they're just pure, pure life force. Take another big breath wherever you are. Side out. If you're in child's pose, roll back up to your seat. If you're in your seat, you can stay there. You can switch the cross of the legs if you are sitting on one. Inhale, reach it up, big stretch. So lift up through your spine. Exhale, bend the elbows, open your chest. We're gonna bring back those lion's breaths and do that three more times. Inhale, reach up. Inhale, stretch up, side bend, left arm over, breathe into the side body, right arm overhead, behind the head or behind the back. So think about rolling your heart towards the sun. We are in the dark of the moon right now. The moon will be new in a few days. It's in Gemini as we practice live today, supporting our curiosity as we move from cycle to cycle. You can turn your head down, keep the chest open stretching the side body. And in the meridian system, the heart line reaches all the way out through the fingertips. So these big stretches with the top arm overhead, open up that whole meridian line. Good, sweep it up. Right hand down, left arm over, big stretch. You can always use support. So obviously my, uh, my home yoga studio is kind of sandwiched between the bed and the, and the closet, which actually gives me a lot of support, <laughs> which I enjoy as a, Primarily restorative yin teacher. So we can, that's the cool thing too about these practices is that we can do them anywhere. We don't have to be, um, actually I dreamt about Joshua Tree last night. I dreamt about, a, about being in Joshua Tree with a bunch of people. So it is fun when we can go be a retreat or convention or ceremony all together, but we can create these spaces in our homes. We can call this in in our homes. Inhale, reach up, big stretch. And again, exhale, bend the elbows. Pull back, hand to heart, hand to belly. And just give yourself a little rock side to side. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, a little hum. And then again, inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, left hand behind you, right hand to left knee. Twist, draw the belly in, lean back. Give your head a little shake. The twists are also a wonderful fire release. And this one's specific for opening the heart. And the Aquarius energy that's coming in, Aquarius is the circulatory system and the higher consciousness. So these movements into the heart, through the spine, help support our circulation. Take another breath. Exhale it out. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, twist the other way. Roll the shoulders down, leg, spine. Okay, keep the spine long. So think about sitting regally, right? So lion is connected to the queen and the king archetype, the leading person, the leading actor, the star. Those are all archetypes of Leo, as well as, of course, the lion, the tiger, the cat energy. Take another big breath. Side out again. Reach up, big stretch, lift, hold, exhale, 
pull down, hand to heart, hand to belly, little rock. You can just stay with this and breathe, or we're going to do a round of breath of fire. So Aquarius air element, Leo fire element. So using these more powerful breaths periodically can be really helpful in, again, the cleansing, the releasing. You can also just do a few more lion's breaths if this breath doesn't feel comfortable for you. But breath of fire actually is going to come from the solar plexus, so that third chakra energy. You can stay seated. For some people, for breath of fire, they like to sit like on the heels. It just gives them more space. So stay in whatever seat is comfortable or just stay with the little rock and hum and breathing. And usually with breath of fire, the expelling of the exhale is out the nostril. So it's a forceful pump and the inhale happens naturally. So it looks like this. So it's coming from here, okay? It's not up here. We're not hyperventilating. That is not helpful for anybody. It's here. Sometimes when we're learning, it helps to extend the tongue and have like a deep pant. So we'll see animals do this. But again, it's down here. So stay with that rock and hum or breath of fire, or we're going to go into a round of uh, breath of fire, lion's breath, we're going to breath of fire. Inhale. Now keep going, you're gonna go a few more and then I'm gonna ask you to do a few and then hold the breath out. And then as you hold the breath out, I'm gonna ask you to squeeze your belly, your pelvic floor, squeeze all the way up to the heart. So we're gonna do five, four, three, two, one. Hold the exhale out, squeeze your belly, squeeze your pelvis, pull back, lean back, move the energy up to the crown, sit as tall as you can, hold, and then release. Give yourself a little shake. Find that gentle spinal movement. And then we're gonna move into meditation, into guided meditation. So if you have pillows and props around, again, Leo is quite decadent and luxurious. So if you wanted to grab a pillow or a couple of books, those of you who practice restorative yoga, like a reclining bound angle where you lay back with the soles of the feet together. Um, if not, a couple other options are a traditional relaxation pose. So this is our Sukta Baddha Konasana. So you kind of feel like throne like, right? So that royalty. You can lie on your back, put a pillow under your head, a pillow under your knees, and then just make sure you're cozy. So cover your feet or your body. Um, if lying on your back is not comfortable, then lay on your side. So you lay on your left side, again, support your head, put a pillow between your knees. If you prefer to do meditation seated, you can do that. Just make sure you let us sit comfortably for about 20 minutes. So get yourself as comfortable as you can, as cozy and decadent as you can. Again, feeling grounded and rooted and connected to both the earth and I'm going to light one of my candles, not the one I'm using for our ceremony. I have two candles here. Bring in a little bit of fire, as well as my incense for Aquarius. And if you are working with any crystals or stones, so citrine is great. Um, Ruby is also lovely for Leo. Any kind of fire, tiger's eye, right? Because in the connection to tiger, anything that jumps out of you, Leo likes things that sparkle and shine. So let yourself get cozy. Take a moment to connect to the earth, to the breath, to the body. Take a big, big breath in, hold, sigh it out. Connect to the heart. So the heart qualities are love, gratitude, compassion, forgiveness. 
And so just start to feel in to whether you can summon any of those qualities right now. Love, gratitude, compassion, forgiveness. Those are the high vibrations of the heart. And in Leo, we activate some of the other heart qualities that are kind of connected between that fire energy and the heart. So passion, courage, confidence, joy. And sometimes those are considered to be more self-focused, which is fine. In order to be of service to the world, we have to be whole to ourself. And we'll start to feel that more and more as we move towards Virgo cycle. And there is this dance in our universe right now because the planets are changing and shifting. Nothing is static and stagnant in our universe. The planets are not where they were five years ago, 10 years ago. We're moving. There's these 26,000 year evolutionary cycles. And right now the movement is very much between this Leo and Virgo, the lion priestess energy. And this is a different cycle than what we're dealing with currently with US, with Pluto. And just know though, just know, even if the astrological language is confusing or um, vague, doesn't feel personal, that really astrology just mirrors for us the relationship between universe and earth, that we are not alone, that we are part of these bigger cycles, that things are playing out in a way that is aligned with this bigger movement. And Unfortunately, we don't always get to know the outcome or the purpose or the reason. And that's why we need these fixed signs in the middle of cycles to bring us back to ourselves. And again, Leo, come back to your heart, back to your spine, back to your fierceness, back to your light, to your shine, to your radiance, because that is what is needed right now. That is what is needed of every single one of us right now, that Leo activation and align that with the higher consciousness, with the shifting and rebellion that is happening as the planet, our planet and our culture make some of these very specific changes. But for now, you are on the earth, feel the land you are on. I am always so appreciative to be on Shumash land. The moon is waning, moving towards that Leo new moon. The sun is high in the sky as it gently starts to move towards equinox, almost at the holy day of Lamas. And feel your blood, your bones, your heart. Connect to your heart. And as you feel into your heart, Listen to what's there. And we hear that in songs and poems, right? Listen to your heart, listen to your heart. But just like when people tell you, let it go, <laughs> it's one of those things, it's abstract. And so we create the space in this ritual as we activate this cycle to listen to the heart, to let the heart love what it loves to dress up the way it wants to dress, to move and speak the way it wants to speak. And for so much of us, you know, we feel that the heart has to just be about others, right? Unconditional love, you know, but it has to start here. So just tell your heart, I am listening. I am listening. And let's maybe hear what the heart has to say. Feel the breath move in your heart. Feel your breath move in your heart. We honor the earth, the air, the water, the fire, the ether, the spirits and ancestors of this land and season, the holy deities and guides. If you have personal guides, Invite them in, bless this space, bless this practice, bless all beings and the universe. May this practice contribute to the awakening and reclamation of our own heart, our own spine, and 
the connection with the hearts of others. I am listening. I am listening. Imagine a fire in your heart. What does it look like? Is it a little flicker? Is it a blasting flame? Is it the tiniest candle in a temple window? Look for the fire of your heart and trust what appears. It's not good, it's not bad, it's not right, and it's not wrong. It's your heart beginning to show itself. Invite the fire of the heart, observe it, watch it, dance, glow. It might be low right now, inundated by heat and heaviness. It might be huge right now, as though it can fill the entire room. Maybe it's somewhere in between. Feel the fire of the heart. Invite the fire of the heart to the fires of the heart. We are listening. We are listening. We see you. Watch the colors in the heart. Are they orange and gold? Are they white? Are they rainbow? There is no limitation to the fire of your heart. It burns for you, for your sole purpose. To the fires of the heart, we are listening. Let that fire build. And we want to connect the meridian points of the heart through the body. We want to connect these energies so that our entire body is online with the heart's desire, with the heart's acceptance and love and healing and confidence at this time. So the whole body, the head, the heart, down to our toes, we are online, we are on fire for our purpose and our passion. Feel into your heart and then imagine a flicker appearing in the space between your eyebrows and a thread of light connecting these two flames from the heart to the space between the eyebrows and then feel into your heart and then another flicker appears at the right temple and then a thread back to the heart. A flicker of light appears at the right facial cheek and then back to the heart. The right shoulder and back to the heart. A flame appears at the right ribs and the light connecting back to the heart. A flame at the right thigh, back to the heart. The right ankle and back to the heart. Flicker at the left ankle, back to the heart. Left thigh, back to the heart. Left ribs, and a light goes back to the heart. Left shoulder, and back to the heart. Left facial cheek, back to the heart. Left temple, back to the heart. And from the heart, the fire appears at the midbrain, the height of the ears, the whole of the pituitary and pineal gland, the master glands, to this warm light flicker in the master glands, and then the thread feeding back into your heart. And now feel your heart connected to all these vital points through your body with a thread of light activating these flames through the body to burn through stagnancy, disconnect, self-doubt, self-hatred, fear of stepping into our light. Feel the heart feeding these heart points and these heart points connected to and listening and speaking to each other. The light at the forehead feeding into the light at the right temple the right facial cheek, right shoulder, right ribs, right thigh, right ankle, the whole right side being fed with light and fire and passion and purpose. The light at the right ankle feeding into the flame of the left ankle, left thigh, left ribs, left shoulder, left facial cheek, left temple, and the light at the midbrain whole left side lit up, feeding into purpose and potential and joy. The whole body illuminated with tiny fires and thread 
moments of life. Feel the whole body. Imagine you were gazing at your body the same way you gaze at the sun or feel the sun. Your body radiating warmth and light from the inside out. The fires feeding into your cells, into your atoms. Feel your heart connected to all these points. And then feel back into your spine and imagine waves of light and warmth radiating up your spine and then feeding into this web of heart light. As you inhale, breathe up your spine, breathe light up your spine from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. As you exhale, feel that light pour down the body, feeding in all these points. As you inhale, breathe up the spine from the tailbone to the crown. And if it's available, imagine the sun just above your crown. So as you inhale and breathe into the crown, you harness the light of the sun. And on the exhale, you pull that solar energy down through your whole body. And just stay with this a little bit longer. Breathing up your spine, connecting to the sun, and pulling that sunlight down through every cell, every bone, every part of your body. Our cells need light. Our cells reflect light. We know that now from an anatomical perspective. You can identify trauma in the body by dark areas. And so allow the breath to move that sunlight, that life-giving energy down through your face, your neck, your heart, your arms, your belly, your organs, your pelvis, your thighs, your legs, your toes, until you are dripping with sunlight from the inside out. You are filled with light and warmth and heat. You are as luminous as the sun and the full moon. You are a child of the sun and the moon and the earth and the stars. Feel yourself whole. Feel yourself light. And as you fill with light, as these fires purify, drop into your heart. Drop into your heart. And as I ask you some questions, allow your heart to answer and just observe. The heart might answer with images, with colors, with symbols, with shapes, with songs. The heart speaks its own language. Feel into your heart. Creativity. Creativity. What comes up with creativity? Where is creativity in your body and in your cells? Creativity. Feel into creativity. Let it feel and fill your body. Creativity. And then for a moment, feel the opposite. What is the opposite of being creative in your body? What comes up when you are not creative? When you are disconnected from creative? Feel the opposite of creativity. Where is that still in your cells, this part of you that does not feel creative or worthy or connected? creativity. Clear the spiritual palette, then you disconnect from your authentic and unique creativity. Wherever it lives, however it awakens, feel your creativity fully. And then let it spread through you like sunlight, bathing in Harnessing the sun and the light, feel the heart, listening to the heart. Self love. Self love. 
what is self-love? Where is self-love? What happens when you invite self-love into the heart? What stirs? What is painted? Where is self-love? Let self-love rise up and listen to it. Self-love. And then again, for a moment, invite in that opposite. What is the opposite of self-love? Is it self-hatred, self-fear, self-doubt? Is it always othering, loving others? Again, no good or bad or right or wrong, but in this solar energy, we call in any darkness we have around the opposite of self-love. We let it be seen. For a moment, what is its opposite? Lightness brings shadow. We can't see shadows without the sun. So what is the shadow of pleasure? Where have you been told that it's bad or wrong? Or again, where have you experienced pain? Where maybe you thought there would be pleasure? Feel into the opposite of pleasure in your body, in your being, without judgment, without criticism, knowing you are held and you are safe. And then let pleasure flow back in like liquid sunlight, filling all those places that have lost their connection to pure pleasure, not pleasure from anybody else or told by anybody else deep inner pleasure that brings you joy, that lights you up. Let yourself be washed through in the light of pleasure. Your whole body, your whole being filled with sun and fire and creativity and self-love and pleasure. Feel into your heart. now your heart has something to say. Maybe it has a longing, a desire that will activate this cycle. Usually this longing begins with I and it is present and positive, often an I am. And maybe it's not there yet. Maybe we need to take time this cycle to play and create and enjoy and allow it to be lived. But maybe there is a language, an intention here, and I am, or I feel that will seal this practice, seal this invocation of the lion, this invocation of fixed fire, of the sun, of the holy midpoint between solstice and equinox. 
urges, repeat it three times with your whole heart. Otherwise, come back to, I am listening. I listen to my heart. I'm listening to my heart. This practice is now complete. Feel your heart, your breath, letting yourself absorb and seal in all the energy the earth, the air, the fire, the water and the ether, the earth and the sky. Offer gratitude to your ancestors, angels, spirits, deities. Thank them for their presence. Thank your heart. Thank your heat. This practice benefit all beings in the world at this time, radiating, reflecting creativity and self-love and pleasure for all beings and the earth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All blessings. Start to move the breath through the body. Breathing up your spine, through your heart, maybe beginning to come back to that idea of moving very cat-like, very lion-like, tiger-like. Maybe you let out a couple growls or purrs or roars, stretch and wiggle. Aquarius full moon will invite us to, again, think outside the box to connect our soul purpose and passion with the higher consciousness. And so even in your body, think outside how you normally think your body wants to move. You know, watch the cats. Check out those lion deities. And this time of year, Mary Magdalene, Sekhmet, Durga, Apollo. Energies of the light. Look into your own culture and ancestry for the fire or sun deities. Begin to breathe into the body, setting this intention for carving out spaces of light and fun and pleasure and play. Dress up. And I wanna invite you to stay in this contemplative place as we do a little bit of writing to create our ritual act. So take all the time you need to move, to stretch, to sigh, to roar. When you're ready though, you'll come to a comfortable position, whatever that means for you, with your pen and paper. And I'm going to give you three, uh, three prompts that are similar to in the meditation. And you're just going to write stream of consciousness for a couple of moments on each one, not thinking about it, not pausing and rereading it, just stream of consciousness. And the first one starts with creativity. So write out creativity and then just let whatever comes out. And again, there's no good or bad or right or wrong, but write out creativity. And then let yourself just breathe and take a couple moments to write out what comes up. It doesn't have to make sense, be logical. You're not gonna read this out loud to anybody unless of course you want to. And then stop, take a breath, feel your heart, shake it out. And then prompt, second prompt, self-love. And just self-love and whatever comes after, but write out self-love and then whatever comes after.
and then stop. Take a breath, little shake, little sigh. Third prompt, you probably guessed it, pleasure. Just write out the word pleasure and then let that come through. And then stop. And then if you recall, if an intention came through in the meditation, write that out. Usually it's a short statement, three to five words, could be a little bit longer. And if not, you might just again write, I am listening. And then pause. Take a deep breath in, let it go. And then you're gonna go through those first three prompts. You're not going to read them, but not, certain, not including the prompt itself, creativity, self-love or pleasure, you are going to circle one to two words from each one that really jump out at you. So you'll just go through and you'll circle one to two words that jump out at you. Again, not including the prompts themselves. So not circling creativity, self-love, or pleasure, but just one or two words from whatever you wrote. Okay, so obviously if you need to keep going. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to just write out those words. So I'm just using our prompts as the example, creativity, self-love, pleasure, and then I wrote it, I am listening. So make sure you know what the words are. And then you can do this from that page or you can put them closer together. So I wrote out creativity, self-love, pleasure, and listen. And you want to make it as sort of simple as possible. So a lot of you have done sigil work in general and done work with me. Sigil work comes from multiple traditions. Basically, we know words have power. And the more concrete and simplified we can make the words, the more powerful they are. And even more powerful is symbol. So what a sigil is, is we take words that have power and we break them down to the simplest language and then we create a symbol with them. And then sigils can be written on paper. Um, they're very powerful to be written into candles because they have to be burned to be activated. So I'm going to kind of guide you through the sigil process and you can always do this again later. And then at least just have your sigil and know what it looks like. If you have a candle, so like this candle has, um, glass around it. I didn't have time to, I, re, I thought I had a couple extra candles, but I couldn't find them. And you can put it on there, but if you're not putting it on the candle itself, you will want it on paper to burn it as well. And then on the Leo new moon, what I would invite is to burn the sigil on the paper or to light the candle that it's carved into and carve it with a pen or even like, like certain, like just like nail things just to carve it in there. And then you can speak your intention or you can simply just watch it burn and be open to it. And so I find sigil magic to be really powerful because it's very simple. So if you're not gonna use a candle, you'll wanna write down two pieces of paper, one that will be burned and one that you'll keep on your altar or with you through this cycle. And then after the full moon, you can burn and bury that one as well. So what this will look like is once you have your words, right, so I've got creativity, self, love, pleasure, and listen. You're gonna cross out repeated letters. So like, you'll, you'll just line them up. So it's like creativity, 
right? It's anything, anything that repeats there. So I'm going to cross out the I, the T, and then in self-love, anything that repeats. So you only want one letter once. So I'll show you what that looks like. So you'll start with the, each word and then you'll bring them together. And then sometimes it helps to like write them out when you think you have them. And then oftentimes you'll notice that it repeats. And it takes a couple minutes and I'll, show, I'll continue to show you. So from creativity, self-love, pleasure, listening, I still got quite a bit of letters and you wanna make sure they don't repeat. So sometimes with sigils, if you're newer, it's easier to like shorten it, <laughs> but this is Leo. So Leo likes to be a little bit dramatic and you know, exciting, but it doesn't have to be anything crazy. So from those words, again, you wanna look at them, make sure you didn't miss any repeating. And then you just wanna basically make a picture with it. And for some people, they make these like really fancy. For others, myself included, they tend to be very childlike. So from what I had left, there's the picture, right? And it's not for some, like I've seen folks who like turn the sigils, like literally like people will, I have a friend who's a tattoo artist. He does sigil as tattoos and it looks incredible. Mine very much, like I said, look very childlike, but that's okay. And that's very connected to Leo. And then once you have it, you do want to have it, like I said, at least twice. And so that might take a moment to do. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, you want it to be as close as possible. And then you can choose to do it now or this might be something you do on the Leo new moon. If you wanna carve it into your candle, you can also cut it out and um, take or glue it if you're using a regular one. <clears throat> and again, if this is something you feel like you want more specific instruction and we can always talk about it. But the idea here is that you'll have a sigil that on the new moon you can burn and activate. And then you can kind of continue to have it sit on your altar. So Aquarius being a mental energy to look at it, to process it from the symbolism, because it's a higher consciousness, which is not language. And then on the full moon, you can, like I said, burn it, give the ashes, put it out into the earth, bury it, give it to that full moon energy. And basically what, what, what happens with these is that it's essentially waking that energy up. So we talked about the deity practices also being about waking energy up. So sigil energy um, is a very sort of simple and symbolic way of activating through fire those qualities that we want to bring in. And if you're like, wow, my words are too long, I have too many words, then, you know, again, you can go back and go down to one word. So don't let this be a stressful thing. I wanted it, you know, playful, creative, right? Think outside the box a little bit, you know, when you're creating it, you know, get past any ideas that it needs to look or be a certain way. <clears throat> it is intended to be fun and potent, which is Leo. Remember to, to breathe and feel into your heart. And as I said, this, there are some, I have some friends who when they do sigil work, I mean, they go into this meditative space for a long time to work on it. So don't feel like you have to complete it now, but I wanted to offer that instruction. And again, if it doesn't resonate with you, then just, you know, maybe write some words on your candle or on your, you know, and work with it just more literally. 
there's no right or wrong way to enjoy Leo as long as you are enjoying it. But it is very powerful to do fire um, magic. Um, and like I said, the sigil is fun and it's simple. You know, you get to make up a picture and play with that. And then if you have a sigil and you want to just take a moment to sit with it and just gaze at it, breathe into it, maybe connect your heart to that image. And you place a hand to heart, a hand to belly, again, little rock, little hum. And Leo's cycle wants to be fun and playful and pleasurable. And my deepest hope is that each one of us is able to have those moments, but it is also continuing to be a very inflammatory and intense time. And we are in the midst of cycles that are ancient. We are in the midst of cycles that are so much bigger than us. And yet this cycle says that the most useful thing we can do right now is reclaim our self-love and pleasure and creativity because it's very easy to get caught up in what we consider to be selfish behaviors, but selfish and self-love are so different because really true self-love is connected to spirit. And that's Leo and Aquarius. And it has been my experience when people access that deep love and pleasure, it doesn't harm others. It doesn't take from others. And that's where we talk about those different vibrations of the heart right? There's the vibration that's all about others, that it's about ourselves. And then there's those shadow vibrations that absolutely are fear and scarcity and grief. And sometimes those, you know, can create these shadow expressions. But in my experience where people have actually taken the time to breathe and move and connect, their authentic love and pleasure and purpose does not harm and that is one of my favorite things about the language of the more pagan traditions is that they say, like, if it harms none, do what you will. And that is very ancient. If it does not harm, then enjoy it. Because for most of us, that pure joy will not harm others. And so just know if you get caught up in that, like, well, I shouldn't be selfish right now because there's all this suffering. You got to peel back those layers of the heart, listen to your heart, because most likely what would bring your heart the most joy will ultimately bring it to others. And if you feel like you're getting stuck in things that you know are harmful to yourself and others, then that's an important time to maybe have deeper conversations or reach out for help or support. Because again, Leo is the sun and too much sun can burn, but without the sun, there is no life. And so may each one of us seal in and awaken that pure creativity and self-love and pleasure, your heart's longing at this time, because it is what we need. Take a big, big breath in, hold up, sit up really, really tall, sigh it out. We'll do three more lion's breaths to close or really access that inner lion, inhale. I bow to you, I bow to the earth, to the sun, to the energies of Leo. Thank you for practicing today. May this support you. Please reach out to me with questions or comments or to share many blessings. So it is, all blessings be. I'm going to turn off the recording now. So those of you on the replay, feel free to connect with me. And I wanna take some time to tune in with those live. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the donations and the support. And I hope to see you soon. Happy Leo.